Welcome one and all, welcome to my channel. I figured today we would just do a really basic rundown of what is in store for 2022 for all of the signs, but I'm keeping it very, very basic because if we get into every transit, everything, then I'll just be here forever. And so um, the point of the channel is more to teach yourself how to do something rather than having someone just tell you. But I think it's quite a spectacular year, so might as well just do it. And I did do an in-depth, um, version of the basic things I'm going over now on my Patreon. And the only reason I mentioned that was because on the live this week, someone said, oh my God, I didn't even know you had one, but it's linked to the bottom of all of my videos. So you can just go ahead and check that out if you like. I opened up for readings again this month. I'm much, my health is much improved. So I have all new affordable readings. They're all broken down by theme. So that's also on my Etsy shop in the link below if you'd like to check that out. So without further ado, let's see what is in store for 2022. Should be a pretty globally eventful year. Um, I think more eventful than, in terms of news, certainly new, more newsworthy than 2020. So let's just go ahead and see what's up. So the basic things I'm covering today are going to obviously be that Jupiter has entered Pisces on the 29th, 2021. Saturn is now alone. So now in Aquarius without the protection of benefic Jupiter, holding down the fort, um, Saturn has free reign in his own sign and it is his sign of joy and Aquarius is also a very karmic sign so we're going to see a lot of changes in all the things Aquarius rules okay Aquarius has a lot to do with like future innovations inventions networks of course I think human health as well can be affected because it does rule the uh, electromagnetic field you know like the, the what travels between the two hemisphere, hemispheres of the brain and the pulse emitted by the heart. So those are all pretty, pretty important. And then, of course, things like authority figures and power structures can be not shaken up. That's a harsh word. I don't want to say, I don't want to use really inflammatory language, but we can see changes in those things because karmic things always sort of like, well, they obviously have a season. They have a, there's a time and a place for everything. And so we might see changes in those things because he's in his own sign and Aquarius is the revolutionary and the original. All right. So um, Pisces is a very creative sign and Jupiter is a benefic. So when you have a benefic in a creative sign, then you can experience like inspiration and like conception. So new ideas. So I think if you merge these together, I think like new modalities of expressing oneself and I've done, you know, the creativity and astrology series. I still have a few more to go, but you see this over and over again. You see this overlap. So I think like NFTs are a very good example. And of course, with electronics as well, I'll get into that too. We could see some, um, nothing to do with Mercury as well. Just see how we use our electronics and what we use them for, if we even use them, if we've kind of overdosed on them. So speaking of which, here we go. The North Node is in Taurus. The North Node associates with electronics mercury associates with communication you don't have to communicate through electronic means so you know and, and the sign of taurus is a sign of nature right it's very natural it's super earthy like earth mama goddess fertility all that stuff everything that's good from the earth so what i really wanted to mention then it goes very very well with saturn and aquarius is this transit because as we know that saturn has to um well aquarius has to do with um sort of like a domino effect okay things that are kind of connected i i think it's the glyph of the waves always reminds me of the patterns of veins in people's bodies so i just think if you pinch a part of it off something else will suffer, okay? Like it will, like a clot. So obviously it's going to have an effect. So Saturn rules limitation. Now that he is free reign in the sign and Jupiter is no longer there to help us, now we're going to see the imposition of limits, right? But not for long because he transits out uh, mid-2023. So we got about a year and a half. Uh, spring 2023, I think. Um, yeah, mid-2023. Anyways, um, we could see some kind of reformation and how things are done and in the way that things are done. So limitation, I suppose. And this goes very well in the North Node and Taurus because Taurus is the sign of attainment. Okay. The opposite on the axis is Scorpio, which is like obsession. So they have a lot to do with possession and the North Node amplifies everything. So everything it touches, it just like completely um, explodes. Okay. It doesn't even illuminate it. Just like 
takes it just takes it to high, high, high magnitudes. So therefore, we're going, this is why on social media you see so many people like hoarding, having bunkers, food stores, and this is very, very fitting because Taurus has a lot to do with food. <laughs> so it's very natural. Now, my interpretation, I really want to put it to you, is of course the North Node can also increase prices. And when I said it rules electronics and Taurus is a natural sign. We might see people kind of overdosing on social media, um, quitting a lot, celebrities leaving social media, sort of falling out of favor, getting a bad rap, or actually being used for um, good things, you know? So instead of spreading fear and propaganda, actually being used to spread good news, truly communicate important things to each other, okay? So it's a tool is useless if you don't use it. Like everyone's like, oh, I hate dating apps. It's like, okay. That's true, I get it. But if you start to think of everything as neutral and then depending on what you do with it, it'll just serve you better. So in this sense, we could use social media for the greater good, not to spread misinformation, but actually to spread corrected factual information. So we will see a lot of that playing out in terms of what is released, how true it is, if it's even worth knowing. Just because we're in the age of information doesn't mean that all information is good information. You have to kind of filter that out. And Taurus is very natural, as I mentioned. So you have to, you know, guard yourself and think, okay, do I even want this in my psyche? Do I want this permeating my subconscious? Do I want this in my energy field? As I always say, I don't want that in my spirit. I don't want that in my spirit. I don't care how hyped up a show is, how many people love it. If it's been renewed 50,000 times, I'll pass. I don't want it in my spirit. I don't want it in my spirit. I'm not going to watch it. So things like that. Now, because it does have a lot to do with the earth, and I mentioned food prices, so not unwise to have a few cans of lentils and some bagged beans and legumes and rice, okay, in your kitchen extra in case of shortages or um, skyrocketing prices, which is very, very evident where I live already anyways. Um, just sensible. Just, I'm not spreading fear and panic. Just be sensible. Anything off the earth, we can now experience a shortage, okay? Water. Um, natural materials as well, like timber and so forth. Okay, the other thing, if you think about it, and I do, I do think about it, <laughs> Taurus is a, the sign of creature comfort. So I'm working on a presentation for you all on signs. So I'm working on a course on houses. These are extremely detailed, like very, very detailed. I can't even, I'd be here for five minutes describing. But one of the things Taurus rules, I'll give you an example, is um, woodworking because it rules natural elements and it rules creative productivity. So people who are like carpenters, cabinet makers, okay, desk makers, bed frame makers, and all these things, all right? Now, if we've got a shortage in that, and I don't mean shortage because the North Node amplifies, but it can amplify the cost of, okay? It can exploit, that's the thing you have to understand. So the price, I don't think there's a shortage of it in the way that we're going to be told. I think there's a manipulation of demand and supply. There's a very big difference because the North Node is corrupted. It, it just distorts everything. So the other thing you have to understand is consider that it is the first earth sign. So it has a lot to do with all of the senses, has a lot to do with all the pleasurable things in life. It actually rules the sign that rules pleasures, contentment, okay? And comforts. This is a sign that rules comfort. So things you like to listen to, taste, smell, feel on your skin, okay? All of those things, things you like to hear and so forth. And in that sense, because it's also ruled by Venus, which has a lot to do with luxuries, you're looking at things that grow out of the earth. So my interpretation of this is going to be cotton. Cotton, silks, anything that's naturally produced can experience now an incredible um, spike in prices. So I've mentioned it in the Patreon video, you know, I don't even want to consider what it would be like not to have like cotton rounds to take off your makeup or apply your toner. And so if you haven't made the transition to a natural sustainable source, a reusable thing like face towels or some kind of alternative that's more natural, then you might experience a huge jump in price. You might not be able to afford it. So while it's still like one or two dollars per pack, go ahead and get a few of those to last you for some time because you don't know what it's going to cost in the future. So that's a really good example. Okay. Another thing too is the North Node actually rules toxins and poisons and because Taurus is a natural sign has a lot to do with agriculture you know rules the bull actually Taurus rules cows as well so the dairy industry milk butter I don't know where you live in, in Canada where I am butter is now just extortionate it is just so pricey so you could see an increase in these things as well and a desire I believe a collective desire for us to eat 
more pure, natural foods. Taurus rules the throat and the second house. And the second house is anything that comes out of your mouth, such as speech, or goes into it, like consumption. You have to sustain yourself through this sign. People who have the sign strong tend to be able to manage, like, finances and taxes in the real world <laughs> missed me but anyways um what you can do then is consider okay what do i consume that i can make healthier how can i make this work better for my body so a big thing i think i'd really like to see for this year is the uh, less consumption of meat of course if you prefer it and you can afford you know locally raised, no antibiotics, free range, you know, um, all that stuff. That's fine. But I, I would like to see less of the sort of mass manufactured, mass producing farms. So less meat consumption because the North Node actually rules beasts and non-human creatures. So it's important if you have it in your chart somewhere and it's not doing you any favors that you consider uh, vegetarianism uh, for some of your diet, if you can, okay? If, um, and it should, it should, it should improve your life, hopefully. So depending on where it sits, you can always tell. But in this case, then it's important to be kind to our animal friends. And another thing too, is like, let's take candles, for example. Okay. I'm pointing the right direction. Yeah. So, uh, picking, uh, natural things. Okay. So going beeswax candle as opposed to mass produce artificially scented things that you don't realize, because if you have, if you have the North node conjunct Mars in your chart, you're very sensitive to environmental pollutants. <clears throat> Excuse me. If it's sitting in the first house of body or sixth house of, um, you know, it's your diseases, basically, you could be really, really sensitive to like allergens and things of that nature. Excuse me, I'm just I'm still getting better. So you have to be mindful when now it's transiting through the sign of nature. Collectively, we should all make the decision as and when we are able to afford to do so to maybe thrift something or purchase the purest possible options, spend more time in your local health food store, you know, consuming what you need, burdock, root tincture, black walnut, whatever, whatever, okay? Pardon me, I might need tea every now and again as I'm still recovering and I'm trying, this is the reason I can't do very detailed videos is because this is going to apply to everyone, right? But when I go through the signs, because I'll just be here forever and I'll, <laughs> I'll be very tired after. Now, Venus is in Capricorn for a considerable amount of time. She entered the sign in early November and she'll remain there till March 7th, 8th. So November 5th to the 7th, 8th of March. Mercury's uh, currently retrograde as well. And they're going to meet up. So this is important as we start the year. We start it on a, not uneven, but a sort of, <laughs> it's a bit whimsical or quirky note. Because, you know, Cap Venus rules currency and Mercury's like the businessman. And Capricorn is a sign that rules institutions. So it has a lot to do with banking, has a lot to do with potential ambition and success. Okay, Mars exalts there. So it's like really, really powerful sign. These people tend to just be very stern and like focused. They're ruled by Saturn. Saturn rules focus. So in this case, you know, it's... um not a bad thing at the start of the year, whoever you are, whatever your ascendant, etc., to just sort of revise budgets, revise your money. If you've gotten a reading from me since December 2021 till present day, I have been giving everybody free money remedies. Everybody's got one. So, um, I hope, you know, th that they actually work for you. I've just thrown that in because I think collectively it's good. If you affect the individual, you affect the whole. So that's been my thinking. So in this case too, you know, maybe you think I'm just one person. It doesn't really matter why I should budget or something. Um, but it can and like it will serve you very well. And I'm not doing that to fear monger. I'm actually not fear mongering. I'm just saying, why not? You know, just kind of think about it like, hey, can I make some extra money doing this? Or do I really need to buy that thing? Is that really necessary? You know, etc. So just kind of consider those things. But it's an interesting start to the year fiscally for the world. If you really consider it, I'm filming this on the 23rd of January at 16.04. So 4.04 p.m. And just, you know, yesterday and today it's been kind of, it's so funny. <laughs> the stars don't lie. Every, people are in a, in a panic over crypto and then Bitcoin once again. And um, just such an unpredictable time. So let's get into what's in store for people. I mean, internal optimist. I'm incurably positive. So <laughs> let's just see what's up for everyone. Without further ado, I hope you enjoyed that little intro. So just remember, creativity abounds. 
the world will look a bit different. Choose natural as and when you can, as and when you can eat less meat. And just mind your money. Uh, also, you know, I know a lot of, uh, just astrology aside, January, February tend to be pretty dry months, which is pretty funny because last year I was smashing it at this time, um, like working for myself doing this. But usually people don't tend to make frivolous purchases at the start of the year because they're recovering from the spending from the previous year around the holidays. And this year there seems to be like a really strong pinch, you know, like it's just crickets across the board everywhere. I look, everyone's like, oh my God, I need more money. I need da, da, da. So just ride that out. Second half of the year will be a lot better. Okay. Just don't despair. Let's get into it. We begin with Aries. And what can I say to Aries? So here's your ascendant. This is your first house. So Aries, let's begin with, um, I, I've included Venus for um, Aries ascendants. Also, if it's your sun sign, I would suggest that you watch the sign that is your ascendant or your moon. So watch the ascendant first and then watch the moon. Sometimes it overlaps really, really beautifully. So like this year, if you are an earth moon and a water rising, you're going to feel a lot of the things I'm talking about or the other way around. But um, anyway, I included it because of its sequential order. I, 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 You know, it's so strange. I rarely get Aries ascendants as clients. I find that I don't know where, why that is, but it's fascinating. So I've included Venus in the 10th because it has a lot to do with one's uh, impact on their surroundings so you know like we say it's your career house and it can um, bring you wealth and the reason I included it is because the north node is transiting the second of finances the south node is going to be in the eighth of unearned money so I just thought and then you know Saturn is in the 11th of like investments and liquid wealth so I've gone ahead and just included Venus in the 10th here because you could have a kind of revolutionary year in terms of money so you could definitely be making more of it I'm so sorry I don't remember the username but there is someone who comes on the TikTok lives very often and has left a few comments and said how can you see weight loss in astrology? <laughs> and I thought, actually, it's a good question because you actually can when you do like health. And so if the North Node, there's a little dragon's head, which is, you know, the symbol of Rahu, in the second can amplify oral fixation, but of any kind. Okay, so I did mention it rules toxins. So not only can you eat more processed foods, you could develop um, bad habits like smoking. So be very, very mindful, Okay. But financially, it's exquisite. Financially, it's very, very nice. If you're married or partnered, then the in the eighth, your partner might come into something because the south node just helps things kind of fruition very easily. It just makes manifest in a mystical way because it is quite mysterious. Um, and also, if, you, if you're married, then make sure your partner is diligent with their dollars, pounds, rubles, whatever, because uh, the eighth house is sudden things. And, um, you know, the South Node separates. So you make sure if your spouse comes into money that it goes to the house, it goes to the children, goes to where it needs to go and things like that. Okay. And if spouse experiences change of job or something like that, just write it out. Okay. It's an 18 month transit. It started this month. So we've got scope for change. We have scope for revolution. Okay. Saturn in the 11th. Saturn the 11th is, of course, his own sign, his own house. So it's not exactly the worst thing. But I will say an interesting interpretation is, you know, the sign of Aquarius is very, very karmic. And uh, Saturn is the planet of karma. So wherever you have this uh, in your chart is going to bring you some kind of like lesson. So now that he's made his transit through the 11th, you might be meeting people you've incarnated with before and maybe they, they serve you. And sometimes when we've learned a lesson, it's time to just let those people go. So you might do away with some friends in, in from now until, you know, this is, but this has been in motion for over a year, uh, for another year and a half and a bit. And then you can also make new friends that you keep, or you can just release them. You can meet people temporarily. And once they serve their purpose, but make sure just you're alert and that you're aware. So you're like, why does that person always push my buttons? And then you got to ask yourself, why do I let them? Why do I let them? Why do I answer the phone? You know, you have to be very reflective. You got to put in the work because if you want Saturn to reward you, you have to do the work. So socially, I will say that. The other thing I would say is to be cautious, not cautious. Take your time and love because Saturn aspects the fifth house from the 11th. And if you're single and looking, um, don't rush into anything. 
Like take your time. See, I'm, get, I'm getting to know you. I'm talking to you. Maybe I'm talking to other people. Maybe I'm not. Maybe you are. Maybe you're not. But what's the rush? Okay. I just want to know you for because Saturn's like very real. So you've got to just like know someone authentically. If you have children, if you're already married, the same thing goes for the kids. Kids might need more attention. You might be around them a bit more, you know, because the fifth house rules are children. Um, and then the 11 of uh, the 12th uh, Jupiter is in Pisces very nice his own sign his own house so this is very good ascendant so of course Jupiter can expand the 12th so you can make so speaking of the 11th you can make uh, friends with people from other cultures you can meet foreigners at this time you can go to foreign places as well and enrich your spiritual life because the 12th is like inspiration ashrams places of prayer places of isolation okay you could and you know he's a wealth planet so naturally then you could experience something to the effect of um moving abroad for a job moving to a faraway place for a job a job in places of isolation like prisons jails um hospitals work as a lab tech or uh you know it's a good example because the 12th is like dark places so um People who work in like, what's it called? You know, like with ultrasounds, I forget what it's called, and MRIs and those things where the rooms are really dim. Okay, that's a very good example. But um, you could find, you know, good fortune abroad. And Pisces is oceans. So wherever you travel to, you because he naturally rules your ninth house, you might cross the ocean, cross an ocean to get to where you want to be. So, you know, large lakes and oceans and things like that, but probably to another continent you would go. So... Basically, 2022 things, uh, interesting for money, it's looking up, uh, effort is always required when Saturn is aspecting, um, Saturn is in the 11th and the 5th. So another thing too is you might, um, and the 11th is long-term investments, right? So you might be very uh, studious at this time and say, hey, I've always wanted to get into investing or some such thing. I'm going to go get some, I'm going to go to the bookstore or thrift some or ask a friend to borrow them or look online. I'm going to read up on this. Like, how do you do this? What's the word hummingbird? And then you just like get down to business. Like you really put in the work. So I want to say that. Another thing is um, to try and cultivate your happiness as best you can and um, take care of your health. If you have any kind of minor chronic thing, like I have a pain in my right shoulder blade I've had for 12 years. <laughs> And I'm just, I'm just like, why would I go to the doctor over that? It's like nothing, you know, but don't be like me because Saturn's aspecting your ascendant. You should go, just go check it out. Not, not fear mongering, but if it's like a Saturn rules, chronic things. So if some, and the first house is the body. So if something's been chronically agitating you, go check it out. You know, if you haven't been flossing floss, if you have a little, you know, bleeding gum, go, go to the dentist, go get a cleaning. If you can afford to, of course, take care of yourself. Okay. I said I'd keep it short, but God, do I ever? No, I don't. Anyways, Taurus. Let's move on to Taurus, our wonderful bull. So here we have, you know what? I'm going to make it green because Mama Earth. Taurus is having the North Node in the first. My oh my. So this is, this is going to be something that could explode your reputation, make you quite popular, make you quite noticeable. And simultaneously, because the South Node is always diametrically opposed to the North Node, in the seventh house of other people and relationships are marriages, okay? It can bring in people that we've incarnated with before. So it can make you quite a target of a lot of dinner invitations, you know, social gatherings and things of that nature. So you might be pretty, pretty busy from 2022 through spring of 2023, okay? Spring, summer of 2023. Of course, you could meet someone during this time. Um, I wouldn't, definitely wouldn't rule that out. But self-development is much more important, I would say. I would certainly focus on if you wanted to learn a language, if you wanted to take a course of some kind, whatever. I don't know. Whatever you want to do, learn a craft, learn a skill. I would invest in myself. That's what I would do. Now, remember how earlier I mentioned that the North Node was toxins. Now in the first house of the body, Taurus is a very good ascendant or moon sign to be mindful of their consumption for the next 18 months. Okay. So if you, I mean, like I can't fault anyone who likes Wendy's cause I'm like a diehard fan, but if you go four times a week, consider going three days a week instead pack your lunch or whatever. Okay. If you normally snack, um, you know, for like long periods of time when you're watching something, 
just have a snack when you're not gazing at something. So you like monitor, you're just like more aware, bring some awareness to how you feed your body. But I wouldn't just say the body. I would say how you uh, power this entire vessel. I mean, like the mind too, you know, what thoughts are you thinking? Are you your own best friend? Are you mean to yourself? Cut that out, you know? So uh, try to be as pure as you can. Okay, it's a very good combination for trying to purify. And so if we're not mindful, just like um, Aries Ascendant, it can turn into something gluttonous. But I don't just mean literal food, you know, like I mentioned, you know, smoking for Aries Ascendant, uh, negative thoughts, you know, overindulgence of a lot of things because Taurus is a lazy sign as well so once you start like you know it reminds me it reminds me of collectors because once you start like look at my books and look at all the junk I have in my room once you start well, you have no reason to stop really so just be mindful like hey should I keep this should I clean it out come spring 2023 what do I still want in my life what's gonna go okay so very but very powerful this is very very karmic so big life changes can happen at this time let's get into career okay so if you've been working really really hard it should pay off in just over a year from now Saturn in the 10th can cause a change in status and long-lasting things so if you're considering changing career the change you make can last a very long time okay can last like nine years 15 years something you do forever okay but it can change status in anything um I've, I've seen change of status in the 10th house in personal relationships and not just professional because it's the house of the impact on the world and some people you know impact their children their children grow up with their legacy because they were a very good parent or they're a very good member of community spiritual leader okay whatever the case may be so uh, something like that so you can go from being you know in a relationship to engaged uh, a lady to a mother so forth but uh, another thing too is uh, rise in power okay and hopefully some moolah some scratch some loot some cheddar because we've got jupiter in the 11th this is very auspicious i think you know earth uh, ascendants water ascendants are very very fortunate for relationships and marriage in 2022 because jupiter is really really bringing in so many blessings the 11th, of course, Jupiter aspects seven places from himself. He's pressing on your fifth house of romance, dating, hobbies, everything fun, <laughs> children. Uh, they're Gemini, not your turn. Wait your turn, you impatient Gemini. So, of course, Jupiter's pressing on the fifth house of all this fun stuff. And he's sitting in the house of investments. So money should be good. You should be able to make more friends. Uh, and so with Saturn in the 10th, let's suppose that then networking can really really bless you this year okay you could just meet the right people they could be brought to you and you'll go oh my goodness that's so strange i was stressing applying for this this that and someone just said didn't you say you had an interest in i don't know whatever publishing and you're like yeah and then they're like oh talk to my cousin they're looking for someone and you're like huh you know it just kind of works out so all those things are possible and aspecting the fifth of love is looking quite lovely of course there's more um but this is pretty cool. Okay, this is very, very cool. You also have Venus in the ninth until March. And the ninth house is uh, important for, I mentioned publishing, it's house of publishing, but uh, legal institutions. So marriage is a legal institution. So if you're looking to get married, your Taurus ascendant, Taurus moon, the ninth is really holding it down, bringing lots of favor and Jupiter by aspect to the fifth. Okay, Gemini. Now it's your turn. Um, this is obviously the first. Let's get into what's really cool for me personally. The Gemini is the sixth house. Uh, the sixth house because the south node is there. And I know, you know, the north node is in Taurus here in the 12th. So let's say amplifying things like uh, foreign places, foreign people, connections, contacts, networks. Okay, so this is really... Uh, of course, Gemini is also a sign of communication and uh, it has a lot to do with merchants. And this is excellent because so many people since 2020 have been working remote. So you could live anywhere and work for an American company. You can, you can live in Bali or go to Malaysia or Kuala Lumpur, set up shop there and then work for a German company. You can be in Germany working for an Irish company, right? Who's going to stop you if the, if the position is remote? So this is really, really, and you know, air signs are usually like with the times, they're very, very quick to adapt. So this is excellent. And what I uh, was thinking here then is the six. So speaking of financial things, the sixth house is the house of ledgers. Okay. 
debts. And the 12th is the house of loss. So hopefully by the time these transit out, we see you discharging your debts rather than accumulating them. So to be mindful. Now, remember, things come easily where the south node sits, for better or for worse. So another thing to be mindful of then is it's the house of illness. So you have to be vigilant about your health. And I would start with sleep and rest because the 12th house is the house of loss. So we lose energy. So if you have a significant transit in the 12th, get some sleep, take a nap, meditate. Meditation is like a cure-all pretty much. Um, aligning your energy, okay? Because it's not a tangible house. So if you have the North Node going through the 12th, take better care of yourself in uh, easy ways, okay? Taurus is quite lazy anyway. So nap, sleep more, sleep in. If you can afford to, you know, cut back some hours or something like that. If you can't, then just rest intently. Like really, really try to like protect your private time, your alone time. Okay, then we have Saturn going through the ninth of Aquarius, which is again like institutions. So if you've been struggling to finish a degree and there's been delays in learning, there's been delays in your projects, uh, finding completion, like publishing a book is a good example, something on the internet as well, um, reaching an audience. Even with children, if you've had delays with children, because this is Libra, here in the fifth house and the fifth from the fifth is the ninth so if saturn is delaying something you know he's not saying you can't have that it'll never be done it'll never it's just saying it's gonna take some time so get to work really really focus and don't really stress you know he doesn't reward worrying i don't think anything in the universe rewards us for being worry warts i know this better than anyone <laughs> i've suffered needlessly for too long but uh to be mindful okay to be practical to be pragmatic and like apply logic apply good energy. In any case, it will come. So it's very interesting. If you're going through some delays also with visa and migration, I wanted to mention because the ninth house, people don't mention this, it has a lot to do with documents and legalities. So things like customs forms. And if you have the north node in the house of foreign lands, and here Saturn in the ninth house of long distance travel, you might have experienced some delays with, uh, you know, getting a visa, getting something approved, you know, in some countries getting like, excuse me, getting a driver's license is a bit difficult, but they might speed up that process, help you along. So the time will come, the time will come. Okay, Jupiter in the 10th, again, status change, you might get a promotion. You might get a promotion that allows you to work remote so you can travel. Um, you might have a change in status, okay? You might also, Jupiter aspects the fourth. So relocating is also possible. So don't rule that out. That can definitely um, come to pass. But really, really nice for career. And I would think around spring, if you wanted to, uh, like April-ish, if you wanted to change careers, leave a job, look for something new, do some kind of, uh, you know, with Saturn in the ninth makes you work really hard. And it has a lot to do with training and certification, getting some document to help you get into whatever, you know, a new field. And then when uh, Jupiter transits back into the 10th, you could see yourself change careers and get hired somewhere else. So these things are all possible. So really a very nice year for Gemini risings. I wouldn't um, worry. I would take good care of one's health. If you're looking to travel, it's a good year to plan a trip with that North Node in the 12th. Making friends online, making friends abroad, all looking favorable. They might even come visit you, okay? So these things are looking cool. Then we've got Cancer, our crab. So this is quite interesting because, you know, it is... Um, well, it is a water sign. And so therefore we've got Jupiter in the ninth here. So, you know, uh, for water risings, Jupiter is going to sit in one of the trinal houses, which is very, very auspicious, really favorable. So, um, yeah, just very cool. I kind of want to leave him to the very end, but I can't hold back. Cancer, speaking of travel, I think there's going to be a lot of movement in the world. Cancer rising is so cool for children learning, traveling, marriage, opportunities coming off the wazoo. Just so fortunate to have Jupiter and Pisces in the ninth. It's looking excellent. for the, I know quite a few Cancer Ascendants, so I'm very hyped for everyone. I'm like a born hype woman. I'm so like wired. I get so excited for them. 
Saturn is still in the eighth, so we might see uh, some restriction through spouse, maybe spouse's income or the spouse is slowing down. Okay, if you're married in your 40s, 50s, 60s, and your spouse is normally very energetic or they're self employed, they like buzzing around. Now they kind of might be like, you know what, I just realized I'm getting old. And you're like, you think? And they're like, I'm going to do less. I'm going to slow down, which means I make a little less money, but that's okay, you know? And when Saturn transits out, it will bless you anyways in some way a uh, shape or form but one thing I want to say you know Saturn in the eighth can can still give a person quite a bit of a robustness and vitality so if you've been suffering from low energy uh, you can until you know his he's chilling in the eighth house for you uh, experience stamina so don't worry too much he he tends to ward off <laughs> whatever that house represents. So when you see him in a particularly uh, scary or difficult house, as I said, you know, then he does offer something there. There is some protection. So that's okay. North node is in the 11th, of course, investments and things of that nature. Now I'm calling it that I think Cancer Ascendants are going to be in an excellent position to like receive presents, gifts, um, just be given something because in the 11th, this is really nice for investments and um, passive income streams. Okay, so if Saturn's holding in the fourth fort in the eighth, it can still come through to the 11th house. All right, so that's doable. And of course, if you're a single Cancer, South Node in the fifth can bring in dates, people that you felt that you've known before and things like that. But what's really interesting here is the fifth and the ninth are clearly activated by transit. So naturally, you know, you can meet somebody. And if you're Cancer rising, that means Saturn rules your seventh. So if you have seventh ruler in the eighth house, it's always a bit scandalous, even by transit, but you can meet someone very, very suddenly. So my advice is to like screen them well and apply logic, but you can meet someone very, very quickly. Something can happen very, very fast. Impulse uh, engagement, moving in, going, uh, what is it like van life road trip? Like I've known you for three weeks. Let's just drive across the country. Like, okay. You know, you never really know, but, um, that's possible, but it's, it's a bit rough. It's, it can, it can bring a bit of, um, a uh, need for caution and things like that, but it generally will signify impulse and fast moving things because the eighth house things happen very suddenly. So Saturn can bring that in relationship, but slow down other things. So one thing he can slow down in the eighth is like, uh, your tax is coming back on time or anything that comes through like that. That's actually so funny. I know a cancer rising who, um, you know, their driving registration, you have to like do it every year where I live and they were supposed to get it within two weeks. And they're so backlogged from the state of the world right now that they ended up calling the government and they're like, well, I can't drive without it. Like, cause you'll get pulled over. Cause you have to like put it on your license plate and said, we're so backlogged, even though you ordered this in early December, we're generally expecting you to receive it by mid February, which is like two months. And <laughs> they were like, what? So something like that, that comes through others, like bank loans can be delayed, lottery winnings or whatever, but, um, that's all right. Other things will still happen very fast. <laughs> Um, <clears throat> so meeting new friends, even foreign friends, because the North node is foreign people, foreign places, foreign things and so forth is possible and looking quite favorable as well. And, um, yeah, we'll just leave it at that. I'm just going through this. Um, I also oh God, I can't, I can't not mention that. Come on now. Venus is in your seventh house. You're magnetic. Everybody wants a piece of you. You're looking at like promotions, hiring, getting asked out on dates. So now we've got five, seven, 11, five, seven, well, 11 too, but five, seven, nine, 11, all partying. So really excellent ascendant for solidifying relationships, deepening existing relationships, you know, uh, expanding existing relationships, feeling more at home, growing, you know, is if you want it, if you want it to last a long time, it can last a long time. And if you, if you want, you, you might realize you want more. Okay. So, but there's a growth, there's a, a huge growth in what we want out of love and not just romantic love, but, uh, you know, love of all relationships because seventh house is 
all other people and the 11th house is like colleagues, peer groups, things like that. So we've got these active right now, especially the 7th until early March, as I mentioned. So if you're single and looking and you're Cancer Moon or Cancer Ascendant, the heavens are not just smiling upon you. They are rumbling the heavens with delight and laughter at how fortunate you are. So good on you, honestly. Amazing. Leo, our lovely lion friends here. Um, what do we have in store for you? Let's just get the seventh house out of the way. Leo Risings, in any case, relationships are extremely karmic because Aquarius is just smashing that seventh house. And now it's ruler Saturn is here. So let's just get love out of the way. If you're single and looking, you can certainly meet someone who can be in your life for a very, very long time. You can always get married when Saturn transits occur because we expect marriage. Well, certainly in, in the part of the world where I live, we expect marriage to last a long time. It's something that we take very seriously and so forth. So and it's very traditional and all these things. So this is very possible. But it can also cause you, if you're in a relationship that's not working for you. So say you've been with someone for eight years and they still leave their wet towel on the floor. And you're like, you're a good person and I love you. But I don't want that for myself. Like, I don't want that for my life, you know. And then you're like, mm. And then you can get rid of those things and invite new things. That's also possible. If you're already married, then you can just uh, deepen the love you have for that person uh, solidify the bond because Saturn transits are really karmic and so they can bring a lot of lessons but when the when the transit ends the partnership tends to be much stronger than what it was when it started so if you're like in a relationship and it breaks it was never meant to happen if you're in a relationship and it stays together then you're going to be stronger if you're already married chances are you'll stay married but you will probably learn a lot more and going forward you will know better and then this transit won't happen for another 30 years so when it comes around 30 years later, you're like, piece of cake, because we did this when we were younger. Piece of cake, okay? So there's always like this hopefulness and light at the end of the tunnel. Jupiter in the eighth, if you're married, spouse can see an increase in money. If you're single and you meet someone at this time, that person could be someone who's quite established and makes a lot of money. For you personally, if you're not interested in relationships or whatever the case may be, you know, uh, money can come through unorthodox sources. <laughs> Excuse me. You could just be given to you. <laughs> you could find it on the ground. It could be um, some kind of retroactive pay. I've seen this happen, you know. Um, people work somewhere for like five years, ten years, and something happened years prior. You probably don't even know about it. Get a letter from HR, and they're like, oh, by the way, while you were on vacation, the union settled this, or the company agreed to this, and so here's $800 retroactive pay. Here's $1,000 retroactive pay. And you're like, great, you know. Um, things that have been on hold, maybe through the bank, through your taxes, through the government, those things can come into your uh, life now. Financially, Jupiter in the eighth house is seriously amazing. So I have no reason to lie to you. It's not coming to me. It's coming to you. I'm telling you, beautiful, okay? If that wasn't good enough, Leo's love status. Draw a big heart here. Leos are born to shine, to thrive, to be noticed. They need air and food as much as validation, okay? It's very important to this very regal, kingly sign. So North Node in the 10th is going to expand reputation. Promotions are possible. Increase in status, increase of self-importance. Okay, so this is very nice. Now with the, anytime I see a transit to the fourth house, I, won't, I always tell my clients, call your mom. Just call your mom. Say, I love you. How are you today? What can I do for you? I miss you, whatever. Call your mom. If you're moving, great, you know, but status in all things. What if you're moving to a new city or a new uh, state, province, whatever, so you have to get like new IDs, new countries, you know, residence permit, whatever the case may be. So changes in all those things are doable. But of course, um, if you're self-employed, I actually want to mention, if you're self-employed, excellent. If you're not self-employed and you're a Leo ascendant and you're considering self-employment, this year is amazing. I'm doing a course on houses and I want to tell you the importance of knowing detail. I'm a very detail-oriented person. Even my manifestations come with incredible precision. And if they don't, I tell them not to come. The 10th house has to do with status and how you influence your surroundings. But the actual job, let's say, like the trade that you're in, the field that you're in, is the 7th. So if you have Saturn who likes to work in solitude who has to do with authority and can influence, make a person self-employed. And then the North Node transiting the 10th. Now we've hit this like double axis. This is really important because we've got 
seven and 10, and the seventh is the 10th from the 10th anyway. So you would always check the seventh house for, for jobs and career. If you've gotten a reading from me before, then you know I always look very deeply into these things. Excuse me. So if you're a Leo ascendant and you want it to be self-employed or have more independence, maybe work remote, do your own thing, become a consultant, become a freelancer, time to shine. This year is incredible and it will actually last. Okay. So there's an overlap between the North node and the timing of Saturn's transit to the spring of or halfway through 2023. So just sensational. So without further ado, start plotting and start planning. Okay. Saturn likes hard work and he rewards it. So get to it, get to work. I'm not going to tell you again, go ahead and make that happen for yourself. Virgo themes are going to do a lot, are going to do a lot. They're going to have a lot to do with, um, well, a bit of everything really, but let's get into the obvious one relationships because Jupiter's in the seventh. Now I really want to highlight, it's not necessarily romantic relationships because Jupiter does not denote romance like Venus does or a sweet sort of sentimentality like the moon, which is really nourishing and sweet. It's deep. Okay. Um, Jupiter is just Jupiter. Uh, if you're a woman looking to marry a man or if you're a man looking to marry a man and you're a Virgo rising, okay, Jupiter can trigger a marriage, can trigger meeting of a marriage partner as well. Um, in any case, that's very cool. But uh, I wouldn't put so much emphasis on that. I would say this year is can be quite adventurous, okay? So the reason is that North Node is the ninth. Learning something new, and I suppose the more unusual it is to you, the better it will be. So, okay, uh, South Node in the third. So let's use the example. Um, just excellent. Language. If you've never learned a foreign language before, very good year. If you're changing career, like let's say if you worked as a nurse and now you want to do something like, I don't know, Google and you want to get those tech certifications, that's the kind of thing. It's like a new language to you because the North Node rules foreign things. So in the ninth house of like learning through institutions, excellent. So the more kind of uncommon it is, go for that. Okay. If you, and it will give you the push to be brave to like tackle it and do it. And so you've got a year and a half, which is pretty cool. Now, the other thing of course is long distance travel is looking really favorable. Uh, moving to a new country is looking really favorable. All relocation is looking very good for Virgos. Okay. So that's good. Well, moving to a new apartment, new city, other side of the country, uh, my Virgo friend just, it's so funny because this transit just like happened this month and just yesterday, just this month, she decided she was just going to go to the other side of the country. Within a week, you know, she had a ticket, hopped on a flight five hours that way and she's gone. She's like, oh, I'll be back in like a year to a year and a half. <laughs> so these things can happen very suddenly when the North Node is involved. The important thing here for Virgos, I would say, okay, a career, what you do to grow your career. So I was mentioning the certification, the languages and so forth, maybe even moving for a job. That's also highly probable. And a, ro a ro but not romance. I would say the solidifying of a relationship. If you're single and you want to be married, you can meet someone you marry. I'm not taking away the sentimentality because we have um, Venus in the fifth, which is extremely romantic. And of course, Mars will meet her there soon enough. So, you know, um, January, February for Virgo risings is just like fireworks. It's awesome. So awesome. So in any case, love is really good for Virgos and a seven and nine being highlighted when we go over the houses course, you'll see why that's so important. But I have to mention, you know, uh, Aquarius rules the sixth house for Virgo ascendants. And Saturn rules Aquarius. <laughs> that's despicable. Well, that's okay. My work will never be show showcased in the Louvre, so I don't have to worry. But um, this means that Saturn rules your six. So he's your disease lord. And he rules chronic illnesses, things that last a very, very long time, like aches and pains and uh, annoying inconveniences, headaches, migraines, things that just like won't budge, okay? So when he's in the six, you might have noticed if you're Virgo ascendant since late 20. 20 that you have a constant you know runny nose or allergies some kind of sinus drainage um, pulled muscles varicose veins whatever and it's like it just won't leave and currently with the state of the world what's going on as well you might have caught what's going around a few times not just once maybe like two or three times you're like oh my god how come i'm always getting this and that General sniffles, very, very common. Okay, so um, the disease lord transiting its own house 
can surely make that happen. So again, not fueling paranoia, but just go get checked out, you know, go to the doctor, go to the health food store, get what you need. If you have inflammation, take some turmeric and black pepper, guard your health, you know, uh, black cumin seed. I can't live without black cumin seeds. So just do what you need to do. Hydrate and all these things, but guard your health because when the disease Lord is in motion, um, you just have to be aware and alert and make sure you're taking rest, you know, make sure you're resting enough because in the sixth house, it can make you work extremely hard, bring work to you, uh, put burdens upon you, responsibility, because the sixth house is about service and obligation. So nothing really fun happens there except for like pets, which is cool because I love animals. But apart from that, um, you've got to get to work. And another thing when he transits out is he can make you really regimented. So for the person who was asking about like weight loss and things, the Saturn can make you work very hard. So you might lose weight through overworking or stress. But if you're like in control, you know, you, um, I don't know, walk three times a week, do some yoga a few times a week. So by the time he transits out, you'll tend to see people shed some pounds. They can lose weight when uh, Saturn goes through the sixth house. Libra. So Virgo, to recap, love looks good. Travel for work looks good. Um, marriage looks very probable. And be, you know, Virgoans are mindful and sensible anyways, but be a little more vigilant about your health. I would say drink more water, less stimulants, things that kind of make you agitated anyway, because it's a naturally agitated sign. It's pretty discerning and critical. So just try to like, okay. North node in the eighth. Let's start here. Money house. So in the eighth house, things happen suddenly. We want to be really mindful that we don't partake in unnecessarily extreme activities. So Libra risings and moons, uh, please defer skydiving for a few years or like rock climbing or something like that. Um, be sensible. Uh, and the eighth house, of course, is like unearned income. So good time to start passive income. Good time to start considering, you know, um, maybe how you want to retire or something, how you can set yourself up for that. Can you profit from a side hustle or a hobby? Because the fifth has a lot to do with things that we do that we enjoy. And here we've got Saturn making you put in that hard work. So, you know, it could pay off through the eighth house. So just be, uh, start to like, Put, it, put your plan into action, okay? I mean, like, it's good to dream, it's good to hope, and I always recommend you use your mind power, but we live in the 3D, so we've got to, like, have a list or something, get a little whiteboard over here and just start scribbling what you want done on there. Jupiter in the sixth, okay? Health and things like that. Consider if you're doing enough, you can probably do more because he's expanding the sixth house. Uh, Jupiter, of course, is the planet of abundance and the sixth is debts. So maybe make a budget or maybe you pay off a debt as well. Looking very nice. Now, because Jupiter expands, one thing I do see quite often is because the six rules, small domesticated animals and things like that, is people take pleasure in nature. Maybe they get more plants on their hanging baskets or a balcony or a bird feeder and they enjoy watching like I like to watch birds in the morning I like birds but uh like drinking coffee or like squirrels in the backyard so you might take pleasure in that but Jupiter in particular rules dogs so you could see through this transit people adopting a dog so if you're a Libra ascendant or moon and you've always wanted a pupper this year is the year it's a good year to get one okay finally I've got to mention, um, I, I did say anytime there's a transit to the fourth house, I'm like, call your mother. But here we have, you know, Venus going through the fourth. So beautifying the house before she uh, exits in early March, maybe getting like a lamp, a new rug, you know, something to make the place cozy and pretty. Um, very, very nice. And generally, like, Libra Risings will have good aesthetic sense anyways, but since it is your chart ruler in the fourth house, you know, uh, relationships with women, with your female siblings, whatever, okay, could just kind of like be more nice, more diplomatic, more pleasant, of course, call your mother, all that good stuff. Um, have friends over and cook for them. Okay, the fourth house with Venus there, it's a very good time to feed people. And okay, the second, so south node in the second is again to be mindful of eating and spending habits because it has a lot to do with assets and attainment, consumption and things of that nature. Also, just I would say to speak, uh, people with South Node in the second tend to maybe speak uh, without really thinking or something like that. Be more mindful in the next year in a bit. 
Um, if you've suffered with like public speaking, now is the time to boost your self-esteem because the south node separates and the second house has to do with value. So perhaps it's time that you find a new avenue for value in your life. Okay, so if, you, if you've always struggled with confidence, this is a good year to, to um, maybe take up a hobby. You know, and, and if people are like, well, that's ridiculous. Like, why is a 55-year-old rowing? You're like, because I've always wanted to row boats. Because why, why do you care? You know, just do it because it makes you feel good. You make new friends. You have a new skill. If you find that you're useful to yourself, your life just exponentially improves. So that's really cool. So Libra rising, good financial year. Okay, and in terms of love, I have to mention, you know, I just have to, with Saturn in the fifth, Saturn in the fifth brings a lot of responsibility. So especially around romance and children. So if you um, have Saturn transiting the fifth and you move in with someone, you find that now you're cooking for two, shopping for two, cleaning for two, and this can leave a bitter taste in one's mouth. Even if you agreed prior to moving in, it would not be that way. If you see that it's that way, you have to do something about it because by the time he transits out, you're going to kick that person to the curb because you realize I was much happier on my own. What is this about? Okay. So you have to be uh, very realistic and say, this doesn't work for me. You're a great person, but this life is not for me. And then you got to make moves. The other thing is it can increase responsibility around children. So if you have a child in this time, of course, ch children, That there's a reason we say it needs as much attention as a newborn baby, you know, um, children can increase responsibility. And you'll see this a lot with people who have um, children, certainly where I live, where there's like online schooling. So it's like on and off, on and off, on and off. And you're like, oh my God, I've got like my own workload and my own errands. And now I've got to stay home with the kids and supervise them. So this has just been like a natural, I think, collective thing. But labor risings will just feel this more. If you're single and looking to partner, of course, somebody you bring into your life now can be there for a long time because Saturn makes things last a very long time. It's a very, very serious sign. So, of course, um, since late 2020 through uh, mid-2023, uh, you could see anybody you meet in this time can just stick around for a while. And because it's a karmic sign of Aquarius, you learn a lot. So you, you self-reflect. You wonder why something triggers you, this, that, the other. But in the end, you know, if they don't stay, they weren't meant to. They were just meant to teach you the lesson. And if they stay, then you grow together with them. And you can be together for quite a long time, as I mentioned. Come back here, you. Okay, Scorpio, we've got... Let's start with the North Node. Because Taurus, we started with the North Node. So opposite sign. We're doing it. Excuse me. So in the seventh, if you're married, if you're married or if you're self-employed, this transit can cause disruption. So if you're, let's say you're married, you can't decide where to go on vacation, you know, where you want to live, something like that. Um, it'll pass. It can be a little bit rocky. So just make sure you handle um, all, all let, let's not call them disagreements, but difference of opinion as a need to resolve that opinion rather than like blaming one another. Um, if you're single, of course, um, you might be propositioned a whole lot as a Scorpio rising because we have Jupiter in the fifth north node in the seventh so it's a total party for romance pregnancy having children you know just like cancer risings as well i mean all the water risings can see just a huge expansion in relationships meeting more people making more friends indulging in your hobbies if you wanted to make money from your hobbies this is the year to do it, okay? So the fifth house is hobbies and Jupiter is abundance. So he could give you new interests, uh, an avenue to monetize on those interests as well is very, very possible. Okay. Yeah. Interesting. Why did I put Saturn? Why did I put Saturn? <laughs> Six. Oh, Lord. Okay, let's fix that. Let's remedy her. Saturn. Is hanging out in the fourth. There we go. So for Scorpio Risings, relationships, as I mentioned, big deal. And also health, because that's why. <laughs> now I know why I did it. Health, because South Node in the first um, can make you really intuitive, really, really sensitive, your body. So physically, to be mindful of a tendencies to overeat or overdo it in general or undereat, you know, like any, any way that you exert control, okay, you have to be balanced in your life for your vessel to be, excuse me, functioning optimally. So just be mindful of that. Saturn in the fourth 
generally makes us more serious, more strict. So you might now be looking to, okay, how do I get down to work? How do I get what I want? And sometimes when this happens, we tend to think in order to get what I want, I have to sacrifice my happiness. Cause that's what Saturn does in the fourth house. He restricts this like inner peace and he makes us think, okay, to get what I want, I have to make my family happy or my friends or my lover at the expense of my happiness. So try to curb that tendency, but certainly don't dispense with, you know, um, being more structured so it can certainly make you more structured mentally because the fourth house is like a deep the place of deep thinkers and uh, people who guide people who counsel therapize um offer a lot of like internal support right so if it's happening to you now he's here like this like this uh, authority figure you're thinking okay well if, why haven't I gotten what I wanted of life? Maybe it's time for me to grow up. You know, maybe it's time for me to accept that. Like I'm responsible for what goes on here and I run the show and I've got to get to work and do the hard stuff, get some books, join some seminars, whatever the case is. If you're looking to purchase property, you know, you might purchase property now uh, until he transits out in 2023. That Maybe if you move, you'll be in the place that you moved to for a long time. If you purchase something, you might live there for a long time. Whoever you're living with, you might live with for a long time as well, because those are all fourth house matters. Of course, call your mom. Okay, Saturn in the fourth house, call your mom, see if she's okay. And aspecting the tenth. So uh, he's in the tenth house of career and status change. So no, again, this is why relocation can maybe be possible once he leaves, or if you've been wanting to move and there's been a crazy delay one after the next, it's because Saturn's in your fourth house. But sometimes you can see a window open and the person spontaneously just like makes a break for it and they just run and take off. And that's usually how it goes. Okay, another thing I wanna mention, I, I put him in the six, I'm gonna mention, he does aspect the sixth house from this placement. So to be mindful not to, uh, and you have to work hard, but not overwork yourself, okay? Don't burn out. So Scorpio Risings, be mindful not to burn out, but you can see very hard work uh, for Scorpio. 2022 opportunity to work really hard because the seventh house rules trade. And so the North Node is in the seventh, Scorpio is aspecting the sixth, uh, sorry, Saturn's aspecting the sixth, Saturn's aspecting the tenth. I think a lot will be asked of you professionally and personally, okay? You might, you must put in the work, as it's said, to get what you want. So you might think, how does me meditating every day and keeping a journal, for example, um, have anything to do with wealth? It's like, I don't know, but something just like opens up and it does and it happens. So in that sense, that makes sense. Love, as I mentioned, is stellar. And when we go through the houses course, when I release it, you'll see why as well. But Jupiter in the fifth, the fifth house is romance. The fifth house is dating and falling in love and all these good things. And Jupiter brings a lot of everything. So if you're single, you'll get asked out a lot. This is awesome, okay? If you're married, you might just have more fun. You might just have more fun in your marriage. If you're partnered, you might just find new things to do, enjoy your spouse, enjoy your time within the within the realm of that relationship you just might find it enjoyable very very cool because the fifth house is things that we enjoy generally and everything that expands there so jupiter rules children the fifth house rules children jupiter transiting the fifth house it's high time if you're looking to expand your family you know you could very well have a child now so very cool for children and family in general sagittarius a little hard for you as well Oh, here we go. So first, let's start with Jupiter. Okay, so mutable signs will clearly be affected by Jupiter's transits, Gemini rising, Virgo rising, Pisces rising, Sagittarius rising, because the angular houses are obviously so important. Jupiter is aspecting the 10th. So of course, things in career changes are possible, status changes is possible, you know, jobs, promotions, etc. Um, the fourth of the home, you might live in a bigger home, you might move to a larger property, you might have more opportunity to move, you might find something suddenly more affordable, and a year ago it wasn't, or six months ago it wasn't, now you can suddenly afford it. And I would just say really important spiritual placement, you know, expanding inner joy, okay, Jupiter rules, joviality and happiness, and the fourth house has a lot to do with our happiness, so you, Sagittarius rising, which is jovial anyway, might just be much more jovial uh, these days, so 2022 is a very, very good year for Sagittarius to expand happiness, so I'm very, very happy to see this for them. North node in the sixth, south node in the twelfth, this excites me a lot because North Node transiting the sixth is 
phenomenal. Okay, the sixth house has to do with competition, health issues, and debts. So things you, you don't really wish upon anyone, let alone yourself, but they must be dealt with. So when you, when you face your issues with some gumption, they tend to just kind of like cower and run away. So Sagittarius Risings, whatever has been plaguing you, and I don't care for how long, the next 18 months, you can just dominate. You can just overcome. You can show life who's boss, okay? So we're looking at crushing health issues, paying off your debts, discharging your debts, discharging your problems, getting rid of pesky illnesses and things like that. If you're getting divorced, you know, you could very well win because the sixth house rules divorce and things like family law, family court. So you could come out on top. You can maybe resolve something without standing or sitting before a judge. You might just say, okay, you know what? Can we just act like grown ups? I just want to get on with my life. Thank you. You know, and it can actually really work out. So this is sensational. So if you're also somebody kept, I kept mentioning somebody asks, how can you see weight loss in astrology? This can bring weight loss. You might um, do something unusual that you've never done before, like those weighted hula hoops or uh, those jump rope videos. People like have dance routines as they do them. So something kind of quirky, you know, but it can work out really well for you. If you've struggled being underweight, then you can also remedy that. Okay. You can experience something like that. The North Node also rules things like uh, creatures and beasts, as I mentioned at the beginning of the video, the importance of like being nice to our animal friends. So you could see um, an expansion in owning a pet or something like that. It's very, very nice. Hmm. It just, this is probably going to be one of the happiest signs. I have to say it's just very nice. Now, Saturn in the third and Aquarius is uh, excellent for if you want to learn something new, maybe, maybe take a bit of a trip local, I would say, because it aspects the night, it can even be something, someplace that you fly to. Okay. And finish things you haven't had the opportunity to. And especially if you're studying, especially if you're trying to author something like an essay, a thesis, a book, a journal article, because the third house is the house of motion. It's really, really shifty. <laughs> like a Gemini, its attention span is only going to be given to you so long as they're interested. You know, it's hard to like pin down. And Saturn is the slowest moving planet. So with this transit, it will just steady your concentration. So anything you need, if you're trying to write vows, if you're trying to journal, if you're trying to, I don't know, anything, anything that you need endurance, patience, and focus for. This is the year. So whether you're in, in university, learning how to code, learning uh, something new about the financial industry, or authoring, it really is relevant. Even like anything you do with your hands, because the third house is the hands. So if you're in lockdown somewhere and you're like, I've always wanted to know how to, I always want to know how to sew. Well, that's like painstaking, <laughs> very time consuming, but now you can do it. Okay. From now until um, mid 2023, well, it started a while ago, of course, as I mentioned, this transit started some time ago, but um, you can surely focus. Okay. So you can get down to working with your hands. If you wanted to be a cake decorator, pastry chef, anything really like finicky with minuscule detail that just commands and demands a lot from you. Now you can do it. You can put forth your mind power and make this happen. So this is an excellent transit for kind of like being hardcore and getting stuff done, editing software, learning how to do things like that. If it was alien to you like a year ago and you thought I would never know how to do that. It's so hard. This is the transit for doing hard things with ease and swiftness because you're able to apply yourself. You're able to apply your mind. So very, very good for, um, again, taking care of business, <laughs> being happy, achieving um, what were once thought to be difficult things are no longer because the third house rules courage. Okay. So when we go through the houses course, when I release that very soon, you'll see the third house makes a person part of my French, but like a badass, you know, it makes them like brave. It makes them really uh, able to initiate things. Okay. A facilitative, like a soldier, like a warrior. They're able to do battle in life. Awesome. Just awesome. Let's talk a bit about love. Let's do that. So no obvious transits, but when you look a bit closer, you know, Jupiter is going to go into the fifth of Aries in the spring. And then of course, Jupiter orbits for a year, but he always goes backwards. So he's going to spend some time in the fifth house. So you're going to have a really nice window of time this year to meet new people, 
a good window, like a good chunk of time. Okay. So new people, romance, falling in love. If you're already married, more fun in your relationship. If you have children as well, you know, the fifth house rules children, Jupiter rules children. So this is an awesome overlap and he's in his own sign of Pisces. So it's like super, super cool. Um, I mean, he's in his own side of Pisces for the, for the other parts of the year and in your fourth house, which is very, very nice. This is what's contributing to your inner glow. Like you should feel more joyful and have happier thoughts. But once it goes in the fifth and Aries, actually Jupiter is very strong in fire signs and he's awesome for Sagittarius ascendants. So naturally when he goes into the sign of Aries in the fifth, you might get pregnant, enjoy time with your children have more fun in general, uh, invest in your hobbies, profit from your hobbies, profit from something that you find enjoyable. Um, if you want to study astrology, it's a very, very good transit because the fifth has a lot to do with astrology. And Jupiter has a lot to do with, you know, source, the divine source of, let's say, ethereal information and things like that. So just a really cool, you know, it's, um, it's great, isn't it? Yeah, it's just nice. It's pleasant. Having an active fifth house makes life not just something that you do to survive, but something that you actually enjoy. So through this transit, it's going to be very, very cool. And then, of course, in 2023, he's going to be there for a year. So even better, even better. But now you're going to get a taste. You're going to get a taste of what's to come. So let's take the example of a single person can meet someone this year and then make it very serious next year. Or... If you're single, Sagittarius Ascendant, you meet people this year, you take the best, you leave the rest, you say, I really like these things, but those things don't really work for me. Then when Jupiter enters Aries for next year, now you know what you're looking for. And now you're really alert and on the lookout. And then next year you can meet someone you have a really serious go of things with. <coughs> oh, excuse me. <laughs> Okay, so that's just very fortunate, a very, very fortunate um, read for Sagittarius. Let's go to Capricorn, our lovely little goat. Okay, I wish I could draw a little beard on it, but that's not going to show up. Awesome. Awesome. Why? Because it's one of the Earth Ascendants that's going to be doing particularly well this year. But uh, I would say probably because the fifth house is being activated by the transit of the North Node in Taurus. And my experience, I know, you know, the rule is uh, the South Node is strongest in the 12th house because it's very spiritual. And the 12th house is very spiritual. But when you get South Node in the 11th, money can just like boing, it just <laughs> flows into you, it just like finds you. It's amazing. So investments should be doing well, meeting new people, enjoying things. Okay, if you're older and you're looking to retire, you can have some help now. Okay, so things like that. And then, of course, if you're single, North Node in the fifth is going to certainly amplify the amount of offers and prospects that you have. So this is very nice. If you're married and you have children or you have children or you're just married with no children, whatever the combination, okay, the fifth is romantic. So you can just be more playful, have more fun, things like that in your in your relationships because it's the house of romance and falling in love and pleasure, Um enjoyment things that you do that you like like hobbies um things that you do it's like why do I do them I do them because I want to do them I don't do them for the outcome you know or the other way around maybe it's like I do because it, it makes me feel good you know so things like that parties invitations social gatherings baby showers gifts this is an awesomely auspicious axis to have this transit so Capricorn risings kudos to you and you deserve it it's like the workhorse of the zodiac they deserve a good time so it's very very pleased for them very happy to see this okay Jupiter in the third excuse me just have a sip of water Jupiter in the third can cause you to take some local trips and I will say even trips by air something a bit farther away maybe by boat maybe you're gonna go see the fjords in Norway I'm not sure but reason being is he aspects the ninth so you could go somewhere learning uh getting a certification a diploma a training certificate and something new all those things are looking smashing 10 out of 10 uh com communication with siblings or friends that you're so close with you consider them family okay so you might see an increase in socialization again which goes very well with the fifth and the 11th house so really really nice and here, the second. So Saturn transiting the second can cause some kind of austerity, you know, um, being more money minded, like, hey, um, <clears throat> am I spending my money correctly? I'm going to, if you, what do they say? Like, if you, 
if you mind if you mind the pennies the pounds look after themselves so it can cause um somebody just be more mindful to like budgets and finances but this restriction should lead to something more prosperous down the line i'm not saying that to like instill fear in anybody or something like that especially not if you're like um halfway through your work life or if you're close to retirement then it's sort of like the value of the thing that you've worked hard for when transit uh, saturn transits out you'll reap the rewards of it if you're young and you're trying to like save up and plan well now's the time <clears throat> okay excuse me if you're capricorn ascendant really figure out like what am i going to do i don't really know what i want to do for work but i know i need this much money to live every month so I should have, you know, six months saved to move out or to do this, or I need a car. Do I need a $30,000 car if the $7,000 one gets me to point A to point B? It's like, it's not forever. It's just, you're just starting to understand the value of things. So it's okay. You know, you just kind of like have to work it out and then it'll pay off when he leaves. So figure that out. Another thing, speaking of the person who keeps asking about uh, weight loss in astrology, Saturn in the second can cause like restriction in eating. So if you, you know, graze all day and snack all day. Now's the time to have, you know, three set meals, like an orthodox timetable um, to maybe try to consume. Second has a lot to do with consumption. To consume things that are actually good for you, you know, whether it's like media or something like that. Um, but especially I would say food, okay? So if you're too restrictive, if you're too restrictive, if you're like, I eat once a day and it's giving me problems with this that the other well you've just got to find a way to like you know you just got to find a way to like eat a banana on the way to work or something to keep your blood sugar up and to take good care of yourself right but it can make a person really really serious about finances and help them you know step onto the ladder of financial stability and hopefully they'll be climbing it for life okay so you'll just keep going up 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 so very good to get to work and this is no surprise to any Capricorn ascendant they know how to work hard so uh in any case Saturn in the second it's a good year for money working hard around money you know working smart like thinking okay what do I need to do blah blah blah, blah. uh and then romance is clearly very amplified <laughs> romance is through the roof so have fun enjoy spend time with your children if you want children you can certainly get pregnant as well okay Aquarius here we go Aquarius is pretty much like the star for the next while aren't they so here we have Aquarius rising. So let's cut, let's tackle Saturn first. Saturn transiting the first house can generally generally give people feelings of melancholy in extreme cases depression. But they tend to really question what what it's all about. Like why am I here? What am I doing here? And this that the other. So make sure you use this as a time to assert yourself, establish yourself, rather than feeling blue. Okay. So if you've got a Saturn transiting the first house, put in the work. What makes me happy? Why do I do what I do? What do I want to do? Get down to business, you know, like really figure it out and make life work for you. So you've got a long time to reflect and contemplate all of those things, but they pay off in the end because this transit is every three decades. It's 29 and a half years. So, I mean, it's going to pay off for a third of your life. So put in the work. Now, he is aspecting the seventh house of relationships from here. So if you're looking for a serious partnership, it's definitely possible. Of course, you might also attract people that uh, give you a lot of lessons. But the important thing is once you learn the lessons and you acknowledge them and you're responsible for yourself and you're accountable, they don't repeat themselves. So just make sure that, you know, if you've been attracting a certain kind of person, it's not really working for you anymore, that you're mindful and that you think, um, you know what, going forward, I'm just going to like, excuse me, my laptop's about to die and I can't have that. Um, going forward, I'm just going to be more open-minded about this or more closed-minded because it's not working for me you know I have my own standards it's xyz so very important but of course when Saturn aspects then something can last a long time so that's also another thing so if you're in a relationship and you weren't really sure if you wanted to stay with that person if your issues cannot resolve during this transit they probably never will but if they do then you'll survive pretty much any other <laughs> any other transit that comes along because Saturn means business so if you're married you know it can obviously make your relationship more deep, uh, bond you very seriously, you know, like real life, real love stuff. Not just like the, I mean, I love flowers, but not just like flowers and candy. Like I will do anything for you. I anticipate your needs. I know what you need before you even ask. 
you don't even have to think the thought. I just know what's up, you know, so things like that can definitely, um, it just makes you more mature, right? This transit matures you and it can mature the relationship by aspect. Jupiter in the second. Well, I should leave this to the end because it's such a blessing, but, um, hmm. You know, actually, career. Saturn is also aspecting the 10th. Sorry, I'll go back to, the, I'll do this, I'll do love after, but if you're looking for a new job, if you're worried about changing jobs or something like that, you might be thrust into a new field, you might be laid off and then um, stumble into something new, and it might take time to figure out because Saturn aspects, it takes, there's usually delays. So if you've waited a while, you know it's coming, it's not canceled, like you're not going to be unemployed forever, but um, try to aim for positions of more authority because Saturn in the first obviously has a sense of gravitas. The person's very serious. They're very responsible. So by transit, you know, now's the time to kind of promote yourself as somebody who can handle their own, you know, who's not hysterical when there's chaos around them. They're calm and cool and collected. Which Aquarius risings always are anyway. So if they're not the quirky variety like my sister, they'll be the calm variety. <laughs> so they manage chaos well, okay? So with this transit... Hopefully, you know, you'll be able to find yourself in a line of work where you're able to get what you're worth and all these things. And hopefully it comes easily to you. And do not rule out unorthodox means of finding work. Wherever the south node sits, something can just come to you in a mystical manner. So through the 10th and Saturn aspecting the 7th house of trade, hey, be open-minded. I don't know if someone just remembers your name and pulls your face out of the ether and shoots you an email you haven't heard from them in six years. And they're like, hey, are you still a welder? And you go... Yes. And then they're like, do you want to run your own business? I'm looking for something to invest in. And you're like, okay, you know, you never know. You never know. Now, North Node in the fourth, the fourth is home, mother. So any transits to the fourth house, obviously call your mother, call your mother, see how she's doing and expand happiness because the fourth house rules are a deeper philosophical mind, our happiness, our trustworthiness, our kindness. So clearly, you know, the fourth house is being blown open by the North Node. You might move, you might relocate, you might move to a new home, you might remodel your home, renovate, redecorate, whatever the case is. But anything to do with physical setting of home, moving, and I would not rule out eating habits because uh, the fourth house has to do with like cooking in the kitchen and the second house has to do with consumption, it rules the mouth. And here we've got Jupiter expanding the second. So you might adopt a new way of eating. You might become vegetarian, vegan, or you, maybe you were vegan and now you're like, I'm eating more butter or something. Okay. So you might find yourself doing something different. Okay. Jupiter in the second. Hey, oh, here we go. This is money. Like this is amazing. So when I was talking about getting a new job, it's probably going to be a step up. It's going to be a step up from whatever it was before because Jupiter is the natural signifier of the second house because it's a financial house and he rules abundance. Okay, so this is awesome. Now, I know it's ruled by, you know, Taurus or whatever, but he's a signifies. He indicates the second like he indicates the fifth for children as well. So here we have him highlighting the second and then by aspect the eighth of unearned income. So if you have, you know, investments, they should do well. If you don't have investments... Do the research. Don't, I would never do anything blindly. You, you have to know why something will succeed. I mean, the intelligent investor I read when I was quite young, I, clearly I don't invest because I don't have, the, I don't have the wits for that, but you know, constantly highlighted, never invest in something you don't know anything about. So do your work, do your research. Jupiter rules knowledge. So you can expand your knowledge base about anything to do with the second house. Okay. Your family, family values, assets, things that are valuable. So if you're like uh, somebody who wants to flip furniture or buy uh, antique things for cheap and then like resell them, this could be favorable for you. Another thing too is like I mentioned foods, become more knowledgeable about nutrition and, and uh, what you eat, diet, blah, 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 dietary needs and so forth. Maybe even um, you should certainly hydrate because in the sign of water, Pisces, you know, maybe you have to balance the... Uh, help with the water balance in your body, something like that. It's also possible. But in any case, money, okay? It's the house of sustaining oneself in life. So you might now come into like a more grown-up role for work. And the eighth house is spouse's finances. So if you're married, your spouse could see an increase. They could get they can get a raise. 
they could come into money one way or another and you yourself can come into unearned money as well because it aspects the eighth house so let's get into the only remaining topic here now is love what about romance so um for romance of course we're going to look to the fifth house which is going to have gemini in it and here we're going to have libra so not much on the horizon on the face of it but by transit we're going to have some opportunities so uh, jupiter is going to go into the third and then he's going to retrograde back into pisces so uh remember that uh three and eleven always aspect seven if you're a single aquarius keep in mind uh, any like full moon new moon uh, you know when mercury goes into gemini his own side the ruler of the fifth and the fifth all those things can bring in romance. When the sun goes into Leo in the summer, that's another window. So we've pretty much got all year round. We've got spring, we've got summer, we've got fall with <laughs> Libra in the ninth. So I don't despair for you one bit. And generally, and I mean this very, very generally, I did say Saturn was aspecting your seventh and he'll be aspecting it for a long time. But when the ruler of the first house is traveling to the first house, you can always meet someone, okay? And Saturn's there for ages. I mean, he's the slowest moving one. So I don't worry for you one bit. But of course, if it's Saturn, you have to be sure, you know, like I mentioned earlier, you have to do that work and you have to have your wits about you. But in any case, quite, quite lovely. And, you know, next year should be very cool too. When the North Node, uh, not, not next year, sorry, 2023, when North Node, excuse me, enters the fifth. Okay, just like more fun, more romance. If you're already partnered, if you're already, excuse me, a parent or you want to be a grandparent as well, 2023, 2024 will make that quite possible. So just a, a lot of good stuff on the horizon, but ultimately a very good year to get your coin. Okay, get your money in order because it's looking very good for you. Finally, we arrive at our dreamy little Pisces. <sighs> Here we go. Having Jupiter transit the first house is generally said to be like the best thing that can happen to a person. So I'm very, very pleased for Pisces ascendants and Pisces moons, especially Pisces moons. They'll be very, very happy minded, uh, even more dreamy <laughs> than usual, even harder to pin down and bring down to this world. But Pisces going over the first house is awesome. Okay. Uh, Jupiter, Jupiter going over the first house for Pisces risings because he can just do away with like 70 to 80 percent of all of life's troubles for you it happens every 12 years so naturally you should rejoice and celebrate make the most of it with my lemon water this one's for you my dear dear fish so aspecting seventh okay so one thing i'll say for the first house okay health body caring for yourself very important jupiter is the planet that rules mass so he can attract flesh to the bone so anybody who has their jupiter return they can see themselves gain more weight they eat more indulgent food they have more fun another thing is it can cause can trigger pregnancy because if he expands the body that has a lot to do with pregnancy okay so that's possible generally just a very lucky year very very good aspecting the seventh of marriage it's hitting the sign of virgo it's your seventh house by aspect okay so he always aspects seven places from himself okay this is possible if you've been partnered now you can get engaged if you're engaged you can get married you know if you if you're single you move in with someone okay but something where something is signed so like a lease of course a marriage certificate um some kind of civil union anything you sign cool okay like we're off to a cracking start i want to say speaking of well-being and the first house, as I mentioned just now, the 12th, anytime Saturn's in the 12th, I don't fly into a panic, but I will say this, Saturn is restriction and 12th house rules sleep. So you can see people losing sleep. Okay. They could just be generally busier because he's aspecting the sixth house of work and routine, obligation, service, responsibility. So for Pisces ascendants until, you know, mid 2023, they can suffer from sleeplessness and really extreme acute cases, things like insomnia, like bouts of insomnia. So it can be quite troubling. So make sure you tend to that, you take care of that. But he tends to restrict those things, right? So um, try to take a nap, try to meditate, try to do things that are uh, not so stimulating to relax. So if normally you'd go like raving to, to blow off steam, you sit at home with your <laughs> herbal tea and you do a jigsaw puzzle, okay? So you want to get ample rest this is very important and try to um just literally sleep 
and you please Saturn through sleeping anyway and the 12th house is sleep so those things are quite important for your well-being I have to mention that now the third house we have the north node going through the third and south node through the ninth so this is pretty significant for traveling Okay, and actually I have to mention, so I forgot to mention for Virgo rising, but three and nine, because they have a lot to do with communication, like third house is writing, ninth house is actually publishing, okay, and academia, etc., is you can experience some kind of increase in recognition for your spoken word or written word. So big thing for that is obviously going to be social media. Okay, if you're a Pisces ascendant with a Twitter, if you're a Pisces ascendant with a blog, one day you wake up and you're like, huh, you had like 200 followers and you're like, you wake up to 10,000 and like Ellen wants you on your show to dance with her or whatever. And you're just like, what? So this is actually the year where Pisces could experience a huge growth and reputation. Okay. Cause the first house is uh, one of the houses of success and it rules self-image. So with the benefic Jupiter here, you can become really popular. Okay, You can have your moment in the sun and your 15 minutes. It's your time to shine. So it's very exciting. And this is one of the ways that it's possible Okay, through communication, through writing something. Okay, If, if you're, uh, what are they called? Like a script writer, storyteller, and a, what are they called? They're filmmakers, okay, whatever. Um, you have a story to tell. Excellent. If you're like um, in medical school or publishing something hefty, like my best friend is doing her thesis, okay, those things can really help you improve your life at this time. They can actually take you to a whole nother level. They can excel your life. Traveling, long distance travel, short distance travel, travel by car, travel by air, by boat, all those things are looking awesome. Generally good year for motion, for movement, for writing, communicating, trying new things, being brave and working with the hands. Okay. So taking up like a new skill, stitching, embroidery, crochet, knitting, cake, decorating, welding, chefing, whatever. As long as you work with your hands, you can expand your skill sets. So love is looking pretty serious. You know, you can, you can solidify something. The ninth house is institutions and legalities. And so marriage is a legally recognized institution. You know, you could, you could seal the deal with somebody. You can move in with somebody. You can get pregnant. You can uh, get a uh, higher certification, training, apprenticeship, some mentorship, something like that, that helps you uh, advance your life. Okay. Move things forward. It's an excellent year for progression and sort of like onward movement. So I'm very, very excited for you all. Very cool year. Jupiter in the first house is so exciting. It's just, it cancels out like 80% of the bad stuff in your life. So just ride that wave. You've got a good 11 months left on it. So thank you so much for being here. Thank you for listening. Um, I wish you all a beautiful, healthy, happy, and loving 2022. And here's me with some of my animal friends that I've met on my travels and my journeys as I've gone places. Um, as you can see, I have a fondness for stray animals and they certainly have a fondness for me, except this one looks a bit stunned, but I did feed it. So that's okay. So thank you so much for watching and being here. Uh, stay tuned. I look forward to so much more. If you want to get a reading, I have new readings up on Etsy. They're broken down into affordable segments. I have a course coming out very detailed on houses. We're going to set the scene in fair Verona to see what can happen in your life. If you have any questions, you can email me at gurugritinfo at gmail.com. And until next time, I love you all very much. Thank you for listening and bye-bye for now.